Hello and welcome to my demonstration of how I motorized this beauty. As you can see, I think that's really quite well. So let me just uh, stop this now. So to try and explain how to do this, I'll just uh, sit down in my chair. Right, so this is a little demonstration model. Ignore this motor for now. I want to talk about these. So let me just uh, switch this. See how nice and smooth that means. As the set comes, it comes like this. This, this there, that has a lot of friction. Right, so a lot of times you see these trains going around and the front wheels are barely turning. It's because of this. There's way too much friction. Also, this piece is only one stud long, so like that, it just doesn't slide that great. So what I've done is I've increased it to two, the length, so that slides much better because when it's short it can it can bind, like this can rotate, it can bind. So by increasing it it makes it slide a lot better and there's a much better fit here, it's completely frictionless. Um, but in all these train parts, just like with any Technic build, you want to make sure that you have just that little bit of play, just that little bit of movement in everything. Don't make it, don't make anything tight. Make sure there's plenty of play in everything. And and it will run lovely and smooth. Now, all I did for this train to get it working is do that same modification there, obviously using some better colours and added a 9 volt motor to the track, to, to the first carriage and that was really all I needed to do. Um, I have this set up with the motor, I won't be posting instructions so I think you can kind of see how it is. On the motor there is a 8 tooth gear connected to one of the old school 24 tooth crown gears. That's giving us a 1 to 3 reduction. Now this motor spins at about 4000 RPM, no load. Uh, those wheels spin at about 2000 RPM, no load. But you've also got slightly bigger wheels drive wheels here as compared to here so I worked out that the gear ratio should be about 3.5 to 1 to get this motor spinning at a nice speed and this motor spinning at, the, at a nice speed to be honest I'm not concerned with motors sort of you know fighting each other I don't I don't subscribe to that whole thing all each motor sees is a load placed upon it and you know so long as they're not you know so long as they're both speeded at a good rate you're not going to be you're not going to be overloading them so and really adding this motor didn't make a whole lot of difference to the speed at which it goes around the track uh, the reason why I wanted to add a motor is because these 9 volt train motors are getting rare and they're getting expensive so I wanted to do everything that I could to remove the load off this motor if we come around this side I'm going to show you how it's being powered so it's obviously being powered by the 9 volt track and then there is a wire coming off it it's coming from the power takeoff that would normally be used to power the lights. It's being it's being connected there by a 
2x4 electrical jumper plate so that's how we get the clearance under there and the wire basically goes all through the tender connects to another wire there and I don't know if you can really see but that motor is just in there there's no rubber bands on these wheels again this motor is just to it's just to take some of the load off this one and it runs lovely it, it runs absolutely lovely on this 9 volt track 9 volt absolutely being the best system and uh, I mean that's that's speed 3 it will go down to speed 2 but it's it's struggling but it will go down to speed too. This track is a bit old and a bit dirty as well, so that's probably that probably could be improved. But you know, as you run it, it does clean up. You don't have to clean it. Just run it. And I mean this. Isn't that a wonderful sight? Lego absolutely need to go back to the 9 volt system. I could run this all day every day. We don't need to worry about batteries. It's just going. And it's going like the clappers. Now just a quick word on axles. I am still using the new style of plastic axle. I suspect that this would run a lot better and a lot easier if we was to swap them, swap those out for the old style nine volt axles with the metal, with the metal axle going across because they do run so much nicer, so much more freely. Uh, I haven't tried it yet. I need to I need to get some more of those but I suspect that we could probably run this on speed maybe speed one and it would it would just reduce the friction so much because you know Lego say it's too heavy to motorize weight is not the problem it's friction you can move as much weight as you want if this was floated out in space then any motor could move it Weight is not the problem, it's friction. By removing this friction here, we've increased the uh, motorizability of this a lot. You'll also notice that we have brown axles there instead of black. The reason for that is because the, those wheels have rubber tires on them. Now, on a purely plastic axle, I don't think that matters. You, you can have a solid axle go across and it really doesn't you know it goes around the corners just fine but when you have rubber traction tires on them I thought well let's split the axles so that so that each wheel can run independently from left to right I don't think this really made that much of a difference I think you could just stick with the uh, with the black axles too link the left and right wheels because it really it really didn't improve it much but I, I did it anyway so I thought I'd point that out in case you noticed it hmm is there is there anything else to say other than 9 volt it's just better I will show you this again I'm not sure if I showed you this enough the first time but yeah I mean this you can see the difference it runs like a sewing machine if it was using this mechanism it would have been running like that uh, so yeah I think
I think I'll leave you with some uh, rubbing shots of the train. I do think one thing I wanted to mention is sound. When you, you know, when you when you're enjoying playing with a toy or whatever, it's not just the visual. Oh, I've just noticed that's uh, that's on the wonk. It's not just the visual experience; it's the sound of it. And you know, PU motors, PF motors. Uh, you know, in place, in place of this kind of motor, they just have this horrible whining sound from the internal gearing, which I don't really like. I don't know, I just think that sounds better. You're not getting that horrible whining sound. You know, I mean, you know, you do get a whining sound from this motor, because that has internal gearing, but still, I think it sounds better than... having a PF or PU motor inside the train. But I mean, isn't that just lovely? We need to go back to 9 volt trains, people. We need to start petitions. He's there watching. His whole, his whole cabin is shaking as a, as a train rumbles past. <laughs> I do like this crossing, by the way. This old school crossing with the weighted, with the weighted uh, arm on it. It just stays in whatever position. I quite like that. So yeah, because I don't have to worry about batteries, I'm going to be sitting and playing with this for hours. It's going to be a good afternoon. That is my video. If you have any questions or comments, it's about... No, I thought it was about to slide off the table. If you have any questions or comments, just let me know in the description. And uh, yeah. Happy trains, and have a nice day.